The Chevrolet program starring Jack Benny with Frank Black and his orchestra. <laughs> Black opens the program with the start of the big parade. Just a word now about the National Driver Chevrolet Radio Contest, which still has well over a week to go. This contest features the giving away absolutely free of 30 new Chevrolet cars during April. So far, entries have been received from all types and all classes of people, taxi drivers, storekeepers, doctors, elevator boys, farmers, clerks, policemen, factory workers. And one of the most interesting things about the entries already received is the way so many people emphasize Chevrolet economy. Some talk gasoline mileage and mention figures of 20 miles to the gallon, 22, 24, often higher. Others write about Chevrolet's very low oil consumption. And nearly everybody entering the contest has something good to say about Chevrolet's dependability. Its unusual capacity to stand up and take punishment month after month without having to run to the service station. Have you made your entry as yet in Chevrolet's radio contest? Have you gone to a dealer, taken a ride in the car, and written down on the entry blanks your own particular reasons for liking the new Chevrolet? If not, by all means, get started now before it's too late. The contest lasts only nine days longer, and the quicker you get your entry in, the better your chances of winning a new Chevrolet 6 absolutely free. Incidentally, later in the program, we shall announce the names of seven persons who have been chosen as the winners of the free cars given away during the past week. Listen for this announcement. Again, this is Jack Benny, the Earth Galloper, coming to you with all the late news events through the courtesy of the Friday Evening Poll. All the news that's print to fit, or flip to print, or fit to flip. The news that gets in your hair and comes to you by hair mail, telegraph, gable, beery, and coffers. This is the April of time talking. You mean the March of time? This is April, Mary. Okay. All right, Frank, let's go. Uh, London, England, April 19th. George Bernard Shaw lands here today, and two stowaways leap from his beard. When asked what they were doing in Shaw's beard, they said, believe it or not, we're working on reforestation. You know, folks, taking out the old roots. Huh? Oh, well. It's in New York. Smith brothers say they will sue Bernard Shaw for copyright infringement and make him cough up. Hmm, Mr. Benny, huh? <laughs> Weekly report from Bombay, India. Mahatma Gandhi missing four days and found disguised as a chocolate Easter egg. April 19. Baseball season starts here with a bang. Pitcher throws first ball in the government building, putting three officials out. Two hits, five runs, and President team looking at timetable. No Alaska, April 20th. Cuban president arrives here safely. Local baseball news, Benton Harbor, Michigan. Barber's College, Trim House of David Team. Four six to five or seven to five with hair time. Shanghai, China. Glace ball season opens here clue. First game held at Yangtze Stadium. Yangtze beat one white sock. They blew Saki home run. Glasgow, Scotland. Jigsaw craze rapidly catching on here. Local stores selling one-piece jigsaw puzzles. Hollywood, California. Greta Garbo arrived here today. When informed of new salary cuts, she laid off three chiropodists. Tan, France. Uh, a little late with that laugh, fellas. Huh? Tan, France. Tan, former mayor, James J. Walker of New York, wed Betty Thompson, musical comedy star. 
Jimmy Wright's new song entitled, Will You Love Me in December As You Did in France? <laughs> they will occupy a villa on the Riviera. Oh, Jack. What? I know a song about Riviera. What is it? Riviera here, please go, please, please, please. Out! Rome, Italy. Italian aviator breaks airplane record by flying at the rate of seven miles in one minute. What time is it, Jack? A man following him in a Chevrolet. Thank you, sir. You're welcome, Howard. Ah, I got that one in, didn't I, huh? Yes, sir. Washington, Washington, D.C. President Roosevelt takes country off the gold standard. Three goldfish turn gray overnight. Ah, but there's nothing to worry about, folks. It merely means that the money is being equalized all over the world. For instance, the French franc is now worth four and a half cents, but the Coney Island franc is still a nickel. The German mark gained one point, while the four Marx brothers dropped two and are now on the air as a team. Now, the Swiss franc, if you care for combination sandwiches, has gained 90 pounds and is now 21 cents, but if you prefer a plain Swiss, it'll be 10 cents as usual. Of course, this condition will mean inflation. So the English pound will be 389, Sophie Tucker will be 265, and five, and Paul Whiteman will be back to 290. But the Chevrolet still remains 445, making it the best buy ever offered to the public. You said it, Howard. Play editor, play. <laughs> of the devil, played by Frank Black and his devil may care laddies. Huh? And now, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to step away from our regular program for just a moment and do something that really takes a lot of nerve. And this is on the level. In fact, I don't know whether I'm going to get away with it or not. But I had dinner this evening with a very dear friend of mine whom you all know, and I promised him that if he came up here to our broadcast tonight, I would not call on him, but the, the temptation is too great. Really, I can't resist it. So I'm going to ask this gentleman just to say hello to you, if he will. And anyway, it is with great pride and pleasure that I introduce to you the famous star of stage and screen, Mr. Edward G. Robinson. Oh, come on, Eddie. Now, no, wait a minute. Just for a second, you know. Mighty nice. Huh? <laughs> you nervous? Oh, come on. You nervous? Back on your word. All right, Jack, but you lie to me. I know. I couldn't help it, Eddie, really. Well, uh, ladies and gentlemen, this is as much of a surprise to me as I know it must be to you. Nevertheless, I'm very happy to have this opportunity to say hello to my friends and to thank them for their good wishes on my having become a father. Oh, yes, I forgot about that. Say, Eddie, huh? Say, Eddie, listen. Eddie, why, uh, why didn't you bring the kid along up here? You should have done that, you know? Oh, no, Jack. I'm bringing that boy up right. Yeah, right. In that little, nurse, in that little nursery of mine, yes. I set up a shooting gallery. 
Oh, I see. And this is his hour for target practice. Oh, already, I see. You're starting that already. Well, look at Eddie. Eddie, one thing you say, I want to ask you. I know you're dying to sit down, but yeah. I want to ask you one thing. What character, I really want to know this. I know a lot of people do. What character do you like best to play on the screen? Well, well now, I'll tell you, Jack. What? You ought to see this kid of mine. <laughs> I know. <laughs> no, really. He gets up every morning. I know, I Eddie. Really, I appreciate that, Eddie. Yes, but what? Look at what I what I meant to ask you. I mean, what what character? What character do you like to play on the screen? Well, Jack, and what? this kid's right. Really? Oh, no. Not not because I, he's mine, but everybody that comes in contact right. with him will tell you the same thing. I know. You know, he he spoke his first word yesterday. Really? What did? And what do you think he said? What? God, God. No kidding. Huh? Huh? Oh, really? God, God. No, I can't, huh? Yeah, I, I, I know it sounds silly. It isn't the word, just Gaga, but it's the thought that he puts behind I know what I'm... Yes, <laughs> well, I, yes, I can see that. There must be a very sweet thought connected with Gaga. Yes, I can see that, yes. The essence of it. I know, but look at Eddie. Oh, you're ad-libbing, eh? Now, look at Eddie. <laughs> no, wait a minute. I want to... No, really, but I'm on... I'm curious about this. What character? What I, What character do you like to play on the screen? What character? That kid can play any character. I know, Eddie. Well, I'm... Well, I got into this, well, lesson. Well, I'll tell you, Jack, if you're going to send me down to that, there's what? no character I'd rather be in the part of a father. Well, I don't blame you, Eddie, and thanks very, very much. Thank it's mighty, you. mighty sweet of you to come up here. Now, really, if that was swell. Eddie? Eddie, I want to tell you, really, this is the finest tribute that I have ever had paid. I really mean it. Jack. Uh, uh, Jack, was that Edward G. Robinson, the movie star? Yes, Mary. Oh, I think he's swell. You know, I saw him in a Shakespearean picture, Julius Caesar. Mary, you mean Little Caesar. Little Caesar. Oh, no wonder Cleopatra wasn't in it. Sit down, will you, Mary, please? Uh, say, uh, say, Jack. Uh, oh, Jack, weren't you in Hollywood, too? Oh, sure, Frank. I was there two years. You know, I made about 15, uh, well, about, no, about 17 screen tests. Yes, I did. There were... Well, uh, well, didn't I see you in the Grand Hotel? Yeah, but don't say anything. I was supposed to be at a meeting that night. You know what I mean? I, you know, but Frank, I really did make a few feature pictures. Now, I was in one called the Hollywood Review, you know, then I made in a couple of others, too. What's funny? I never hear you talk about it. Well, I'm modest, you know. You know. And I don't talk about it either. Well, well, they're modest, too, you know, Frank. I, but, you know, really, I had an offer, Frank, to go back to Hollywood recently. They want me to work with... Tom Mix. I want to sort of team up with him, you know? Team up with Tom Mix? What's the matter? Is Tony sick? Sick? <laughs> Frank. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, Frank, a professional courtesy. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah. What? When Mickey Mouse is in the picture, maybe you could play that. <laughs> Ah, oh, folks, the way we get by with these movie picture jokes is a cinema. Oh, Mr. Benny, please, sir. Uh, I'm apologizing. Well, I must not tarry any longer. Now we're going to have a song by your old friend, Jimmy. James Melton will sing L'Amour, Toujours L'Amour. Is that it? No, nope. By Rudolph Grimmel. Say, Jimmy, uh, that's a little French number, isn't it? Yes, Jack. Uh, you don't speak French, do you? Oui, oui. Chevrolet Coupe. That's not French. I know, but it's time to mention our progress. <laughs> And 
Folks, I know that a lot of you are sitting on the edge of your chairs waiting to hear if you won a car in the Chevrolet radio contest. So if Howard Claney will promise not to give you a selling talk. You won't, Howard, now, huh? All right, I'll give him a minute to announce the names of this week's winners. Good luck, folks. I hope you win a car. Go ahead, Howard. <laughs> names of the winners of the free Chevrolet cars given away for the period from April 12th through and including April 18th. Are you ready? Well, first, Center Port, Long Island, New York. Gordon McRae. Second, Frederick Maryland. William D. Bowers. Third, Minneapolis, Minnesota. S. H. Peterson. Fourth, New Orleans, New Orleans, Louisiana, D. G. Dumas. Fifth, San Francisco, California, Mrs. William Lizer. Sixth, Rosedale, Mississippi, Miss Patty R. Sanders. Seventh, Manistee, Michigan, Mrs. Elizabeth Dudley Matson. Congratulations. Now all that you winners have to do is visit your Chevrolet dealers, pick out the body type you want, and your car will be delivered to you absolutely free with the compliment of Chevrolet. Next week, another group of winners will be announced. So if you weren't so fortunate tonight, maybe your name will be announced next week. Listen in and see. Well, Howard, you made quite a few people happy tonight. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we have another big surprise for you. This evening, we are going to present that great heart-throbbing drama, the play that made your parents weep and your grandparents cry, that old masterpiece, Why Gals Leave Home. Now, we don't guarantee to make you cry tonight, but you will at least be sore. And as we, um, as we cannot hand out programs, I will announce the cast. The part of Nell Weathersby, the daughter, will be played by Mary Livingston. Felicia, the mother, by Blanche Stewart. Mr. Zeke Melton will appear as the lover, Pete Claney the villain, while I, Jack Lewis Stone Benny the father. Now the first scene is in the old homestead, a garden in the front, a garage in the back, and two letters from the landlord on the stoop. <laughs> uh, before the play goes on, we will have a little overture by the orchestra. Okay, Frank. <laughs> And now, uh, and now for our play, Why Gals Leave Home. The first scene is in the kitchen of the Weathersby house. Uh, wait till I get my wig on, folks. Mary, did you see my wig any place? Yes, Jack, and walk away. Well, never mind. Um, <laughs> uh, places, everybody. Uh, music, Frank. Curtain. <laughs> Phone is ringing, Lemuel. Well, let it ring. It always does at the start of our plays, and I'm getting sick of it. Oh, uh, Lemuel, do you know what day this is? 
Yes, Felicia, it's our anniversary. Our 20th anniversary. I think I'll go out and kill a chicken. Well, why blame the poor chicken? Oh, I see. Well, I was just thinking. Felicia, our daughter Nell is getting nigh out of 18, and she's still hanging around the old homestead. Why don't that gal get out like other gals do and forget us old folks? Well, Nell loves her home, and she has no reason to leave here. And besides, what's the key to you out in the world by herself? Well, she should go to the big city. A gal like her could always scrape up a glass of beer. And if she plays her cards right, maybe a pretzel, too. Well, I don't think she cares for pretzels. Oh. Besides, I spoke to her, and she won't leave home. That's because you don't know why gals leave home. And she's getting at that age now where we've got to tell her. Here she comes now. I'll speak to her. There's no place like home. There's no place like home. When they close all the nightclubs, there's no place like home. Oh, Nell. Yes, Nell. Daddy. What you doing? Well, I just chopped some wood, and I'm going to scrub the floors and then go out and paint the old barn. <laughs> See, I love this place. Oh, you do, eh? Well, I guess it's our fault. Sit down, Nell. We'll have a bite of dinner, then I want to talk to you. Uh, what are we going to have for dinner, Daddy? Oh, just some jigsaw lunch. Mother's putting the pieces of meat together now. I just love her. Who's that? Must be the landlord. Well, tell him we don't want any. Oh, Jack. Oh, Jack, just another thing I forgot to tell you about my baby. Oh, Mr. Robinson, wait a minute. <laughs> Listen, Mr. Robinson, please, we're right. acting. We're, we're acting. acting. We're acting. Oh, well, I couldn't tell. Oh, yes, I said. <laughs> <laughs> Hello? Hello? It's to you, Nell. It's that deep Melton. He's been calling you twice a year. I think he's stuck on you. <laughs> hello? Oh, hello, Broken Hanson. Why don't you come up sometime? Nell! <laughs> What's that? No, no, deep. I can never marry you. Never. Besides, I have to ask Father. Oh, Daddy, he just wants me to marry him. Well, it's all right with me, gal. He's a nice boy. Father said no, Zeke. Uh, what's that? You're coming right over? All right. Goodbye. Hey, what's the matter with you, Nell, anyway? Why don't you marry Zeke? Because I'm Zeke and tired of him. Oh, I... <laughs> Why don't I give myself those jokes? Hmm? Besides, I love this home, and I'll never leave. Well, you might as well, because we'll all be thrown out next month. Steve. Sam seems to be glad of that. Come in. Hi there, folks. Hello, Zeke. Got here quick. <laughs> sit down. Sit down and have a bite of dinner with us. No three. I hit here once. Got sick as a dog, too. Yeah. <laughs> well, I... I noticed the resemblance. What's on your mind, Zeke? <laughs> Well, Mr. Wesby, I'll tell you. Mm -hmm. I come here to ask for your daughter's hand. Yeah. I love Nell, and I want to marry her. Yeah. Now, do I get her, or do I not? Well, take her, Zeke, and good luck to you. Aha, uh -huh, so you're going to stand in the way, eh? <laughs> well, I'm going to fight till I get her. Hey, Jimmy, are you reading the wrong lines? Lines or no lines, I love Nell. But, Zeke. Now, listen, Nell. We'll have to look. Be ready at 9 o'clock tonight, and I'll come to your window with a letter. You're supposed to whisper that. Oh. Remember, 9 o'clock tonight. Hey, you better make that 10. I go to bed at 9. Okay. That's all right. Goodbye, Nell. Huh. I'd rather marry Dracula than that Zeke Melton. Well, you can't expect to get one of those movie stars. Huh? <laughs> you better go to bed, Nell. <laughs> Now go into scene two at the window of Nell's room. It is 10 o'clock and pitch dark. Oh, Nell, Nell. Is that you, Zeke Melton? No, it's me. I'm flat. Zeke couldn't come tonight. <laughs> Did you bring your officer, Frank? Uh, where are you? I'm up here on the ladder. Hurry up. We've got to get away. No, I can't leave home. I won't leave. Besides, you have to ask Father. Where is your father? I'm down here holding the ladder. <laughs> Better hurry up, Nell, before Frank changes his mind. You know, Zeke did. Yes, Nell. Come away with me, and I'll make you happy. No, no. A thousand times no. Better make that 200. It's a short program. <laughs> I can never marry you, Frank Black. 
All right, then. Farewell. Farewell, cruel world. What are you going to do, Frank? Kill yourself? No, I'm going to kill Zeke. It's his gal. Yeah. 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 Looks like I'll never get rid of that daughter of mine. Who's that? It's me, Pete Cleaner. Hello, Pete. What are you doing here this time of night? I love your daughter and I want to marry her. You too? Hey, Frank, get off the ladder and make room for Pete. <laughs> Be careful there, Pete. Don't fall. No, no. Who is it this time? It's me, Pete Cleaner. I've come to take you away from here. No, Pete, I shall never leave home unless I have a good reason. For heaven's sake, Pete, give her a reason. I love you, Nell. Isn't that enough? No, love isn't everything. Give her another reason, Pete. I have money, loads and loads of it. Pete, if she turns you down this time, I'll marry you. I don't care for money. That's only in the play, folks. And another thing, Nell. I have a car. What kind of a car? Here it comes, folks. Here it comes. A Chevrolet, the most dependable car in the low-priced field. Chevrolet? That's what I've been waiting to hear. Goodbye, Daddy. Goodbye. I'm going with Pete. Another victory for Chevrolet. The reason why gals leave home. Goodbye, Nell. That was Why Gals Leave Home. And next week we will play Why Gals Come Back. And now Mary Livingston Weathersby will sing It's Great to Be Alive. <laughs> in Chevrolet's radio contest. Only nine more days in which you'll have the opportunity to win a new Chevrolet 6 absolutely free. So by all means, get over to your Chevrolet dealers without further delay. And remember, if you buy a new Chevrolet during the period of the contest and then win a free car, you have your choice of accepting either the free car, either the free car or its equivalent in cash. Chevrolet offers every motor car buyer and every winner in the contest his choice of 11 big six-cylinder models priced from... $445 to $565, FOB, Flint, Michigan. Sorry, Mary didn't have a chance to sing for you, but it's a little late now. And again, I want to thank Mr. Robinson for appearing on this program. I hope he makes me an offer for the picture rights of our play. Well, let's go, Mary. All right, Lamb. Jack's the name. Good night, folks. <laughs> National Broadcasting Company.